Do you have a low battery voltage message on your screen? Let's see if we can fix it. A low battery voltage unit needs service message on a Garmin GNS 480 indicates that the internal backup battery voltage has dropped below a safe level. This battery is responsible for preserving user entered data and settings when the main power is turned off. In the case of the GNS 480, this internal battery ensures that critical navigation data remains intact. To get inside the 480, we first start by removing the screws that hold the faceplate on. It's also a good idea to remove the memory card before pulling the faceplate off. Gently wiggle the plate forward. Here you can see the plug that connects the faceplate to the main board. As I disassemble this equipment, it's important to me that I itemize and label as I go. As time may pass from the time I take it apart to the time I get to put it back together. A quick observation of the case shows me that there are two black screws. I'm labeling the case to ensure that these screws are returned to this location. Now I'm removing the first of two rear covers. So far it appears that all of these screws are the same length. If I see a longer or a shorter one, I'll label the case accordingly. Looking at the guts under the first cover, I'm not seeing anything that looks like an internal battery. So we'll take another cover off. Uh, the black ones are shorter. It might be a good time to mention that I've never taken a GNS 480 apart before, so I'm being very careful here. So here's the battery. The battery is held in both with friction on three sides and Velcro on the fourth side. It is really in there. I used a small screwdriver to gently pry the battery out. OK. 
Okay, well that's a plug. Well, I think it unplugs. Can't, uh, I'll see if I can get the camera on that. Difficult to get the light in there too. Yeah, right in here. I'll try to get the, the I'll try to get more light on that. You should be able to see the plug there now. I think I can just pull that out. Uh, assuming I can also get it back in. Let's give that a go. Just before I go any further, I'm going to take this off and see if I can... Okay, there you go. Lithium battery, non-rechargeable, 3.6 volts, 1.7 amp hours. Okay. Okay, yep, I can put that back on. So red towards the front and black towards the back. Let's take another look at that. All right, so I have to replace this. There's only two connections used, being used. Okay. Let's see if we can fix that. The battery I bought is an SAFT LS17330. It is a 3.6 volt, 2.1 amp hour, and I bought it on Amazon. I've provided a link below. Here I'm being super careful as I try to peel the heat shrink covering off the old battery. Oh, that's really strong. Okay. Huh. Looks like the same battery. <laughs> okay. It is the same battery. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay. What do we got here? How is that held on? Okay. A little bit of solder, it looks like, eh? It's not solder. It's welded. It looks like they used hot glue to stick it to this plastic thing. Huh. Okay, well, I got the right battery. Okay, uh, what do I do here? I don't know if I spend time trying to get this off of here or not. Okay. Well, this looks fairly straightforward. I wonder if it's just a little bit of heat. Who's holding that on there? It is welded on. Not knowing that it was welded on, I first tried to use a little bit of heat to remove the solder. This is a no-no. This isn't solder. Hmm. Don't know what's holding that on. It is welded on. Hmm. I want to just do a close up of this battery. I want to show you how they've connected to it. It's welded. Let's get the light on that just right. Not soldered, welded.
here I've just added, that's me. I've added a little bit of solder there. I was trying to heat it up to get it off, but it's not soldered, it's welded. And they do not recommend, um, they do not recommend using uh, soldering a connection. So I'm gonna have to come up with a friction fit or something, some kind of compression fit. Haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'm gonna work on that right now because I cannot solder it. Here's the new one. I later read the spec sheet on the battery and it says the following. The SAF TLS 17330 is commonly used in industrial, aerospace and military applications. To connect to this battery, they suggest crimping or welding. With respect to welding, they are suggesting resistance welding or laser welding to attach a wire or connector. Soldering is not recommended due to the risk of damaging the battery. So I don't have any of these welding tools. Of all of the challenges that I was going to have in doing this little job, I certainly didn't think connecting to the battery was going to be the most difficult. Um, so I'm not allowed to solder to this and I can't weld to it. It talked about laser etching. Anyways, everything it's suggesting that I do, I can't do. So the next thing it talks about is some sort of mechanical pressure or something like that. And uh, I haven't got a clue how I'm going to do that. I was thinking about maybe holding it in place with an elastic and then getting some large chunk of uh, heat shrink to go around the whole thing and see if that uh, holds it together. On the positive side here, I've just, uh, focus on that, yeah, just wrapped it around the terminal there. Again, it also is loose. Man, I'd like to solder that. Here I'm using electrical tape. I expect to receive a fair bit of criticism for this and I certainly don't endorse what I'm doing here. But I do want to be transparent and show you exactly what I did to make this work. So this is less than ideal. Uh, I have very tightly wrapped this with uh, black electrical tape, holding it very securely in place. A lot of pressure on both ends. Uh, not my first choice, I'll tell you that much. This is, um, I'm gonna also use this to uh, add some friction on the install. That adds additional pressure. I'm going to make it tighter than that yet. So a couple more layers around this way and then this will be the, the friction that will hold it in place. Here I'm reconnecting the four pin connector to the motherboard. Being very careful to align correctly and not bend over a pin. Okay, I think that's on. Okay, let's uh, start putting it back together. The reassembly, of course, is just the reverse of disassembly. I just took my time and carefully aligned the case to the chassis. 
I also didn't tighten any of the screws until all screws for a given cover were installed. The two black screws are the only screws that were shorter. Here the last chassis cover plate is being installed. The face plate is the last piece that needs to be reinstalled make sure you don't have it upside down. Wow, that's sort of it. No pressure at all, it just went in nice. All of the faceplate screws are the same length, so location does not seem to matter. Those are loose. Like before, I installed them all loose before I tightened them up. Okay. All right, let's go put it in. Before I put this back in the aircraft, I thought I'd show you how the uh, clamping system works. You'll notice there's two tabs there. So it goes in like this and then it locks like that and this is behind a, a sheet of uh, oh, a, a little uh, piece of metal it goes into a groove like that and then as you pull it it tightens it you see that and that's what seats all of the uh, connections so we start all the way out like that here we go pushes it into all of these connections so I'm gonna go put it in right now Okay, we have the unit back in, and so I'll put some power to it. Okay, it's up. I'm inside the hangar, so I don't have integrity, but uh, let's check for messages. No new messages. No old messages. I've got no warnings. It is fixed. Cool. Thank you.